What is going on everybody? Uh, this video is going to be a quick run through of getting uh, the Google SDK set up on your local mas machine so you can use the gcloud command. Uh, let's jump right in. So here I am in a new-ish uh, install of Linux Mint and if we just open up a browser we can go uh, gcloud SDK and we'll just go to the documentation here and open up a terminal and we'll just curl that down uh, and if we look they were nice enough to provide us with the uh, command to unzip this so we'll just give that a few seconds and that'll be in the same directory so just to save time I can do tar xf and this is going to come down as Google and tab to autocomplete that. And once that unzips, we can go ahead and take a look at it. And we can go ahead and get rid of the tar.gz file. So uh, the CLI. And you can put this pretty much anywhere. It has a script that's smart enough to add to your bash RC file. Uh, so it'll know where to find it. Uh, third party application. So I'm going to go ahead and move it to uh, OPT. And it would be helpful if I gave the name of what I would like to move and opt slash dot which means just put that in the opt directory uh, directory not empty Oh, you know what? I actually uh, shut down this VM. I meant to restore to a checkpoint, uh, but did not. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, remove what's there just so we can uh, see this. And it is a directory, so we do need to do RF, which is recursive and forced. There we go. And what I meant by third-party application, uh, typically you would put those in OPT. There's kind of a big discussion of uh, user local bin versus what you put in the OPT directory. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and put it in OPT. And then we just need to go to that directory and we're going to go into the Google Cloud SDK directory and then into the, actually I think that's just right on uh, the main part here, yeah. And then we'll run the install.sh. Uh, no, I won't share my data. And yes. I do want to update my path variable uh, and I do want to add this to my bash RC file. And if we go ahead and go back to our home directory, we can then look at bash RC and we see that it was smart enough to add these sections here. Uh, you can dissect those on your own, uh, but actually if we just go back to that directory uh, minus just is going back to the directory I was just in and we can go ahead and uh, look at that uh, so yep 
uh, that is what it is calling in our uh, bash rc file um, if you're smart enough to dissect this um, good on you uh, i just trust uh, the google magic here uh, so i'm going to go ahead and do a gcloud auth login and that should go ahead and uh, i already did this before because i didn't restore the checkpoint uh, but if you're just jumping into this uh, it would have a place for you to put in your uh, Google email address. I'm just going to click on this. You would then put in your password, uh, and then you would get this here. Just say allow, and you should be good to go. Okay, so now to start using G Cloud, you are going to want a project. Uh, let me just grab my notes here. And so we can do something like, I'm going to control L just to clean up that terminal. Uh, we can go ahead and set a variable, project ID, and we will just set that equal to uh, Terra Demo dash, and we're just going to use uh, random. Uh, let's see. Because I have a space there. Yeah. So no spaces between the equal. And now if you echo project ID, uh, you see I just appended a random uh, four digit number at the end. And now I can go ahead and do a G Cloud projects create. Use the variable we just created project ID and set as, oops, set as default. And so now if we go ahead and do a GCP login, all right. Those are some other projects I've got hanging out there. Let's so this. Should have put it there. Okay. So this is kind of an I gotcha, or not me, but a gotcha. Uh, if you create a project using the G Cloud CLI, uh, it's not going to have the billing account ID associated with it. Uh, there may be a way you can do that programmatically from the CLI, uh, but um, if you had just gone here to uh, GCP and created the project here, it would have automatically put that billing account or associated it with your project. Uh, so it would have saved you that step. Uh, but that is all for this video. And if you did go ahead and create your project here, uh, you could always just do uh, G Cloud uh, config set project and then you would just put uh, whatever project here actually let me double check because that's going to be a little tricky another gotcha we're going to go to the dashboard we're going to go to docker demo and the project id is actually this. So I'm going to go ahead and say no, and I'm actually going to give it the project ID, not the project name. And you see, it doesn't give me that scary warning of you don't have access to a project 
uh, with that name. And that's a little odd that it's not showing up there yet. Uh, maybe it needs a little bit of time. Maybe that's a, a little bit of a bug. Uh, oh, maybe because I hadn't been in it yet. So when you create it, it automatically drops you into the project. Uh, so you just need to search for it uh, and find it once you go to it. Then it'll be in your recents here. Uh, but that's all I have for this video. Hopefully that was kind of a quick painless process showing you how to set up uh, G Cloud on your local machine. There's a lot of fun tools you can play with in there. A lot of information you can programmatically retrieve from GCP uh, that way. So hopefully that this helps some of you out there out. Uh, and I will see you in another video.